So here we have our previous project. Uh, if you don't have this, then make sure to go back to part one where we created all of this. But uh, this is basically what we left off with um, uh, in the first part. So this is where we are going to continue from. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to start using some user defaults. Uh, now, what I want to do is, as you saw, uh, we had a number of, of records. And this basically keeps track of how many records we already have and then create a specific and a unique URL for each recording. Now, when we want to make multiple recordings, we want to make sure that each recording gets their own number. And then even when the user shuts down the application, we want to continue from the number where we left off. Because if we don't do that, we're going to start overriding our old recordings. If we always start from the number uh, zero, then we're going to override the recording number zero, the one, the two, instead of continuing off from, for example, recording three. So we want to make sure that we store this number, this number of records in our user defaults. Uh, the place I'm going to do that is I'm going to do it when the recorder has stopped. So when we have stopped the recording and uh, we have made sure that recording is complete, then I'm going to save uh, the number of um, the current, the number that is the last recording that I'm going to save in my user defaults. So I'm going to say user defaults.standard and then I'm going to set a value and I'm going to, not a URL, but I'm going to set, let's see, I'm going to set a value and the value is number of record. So basically this is our variable up here for the key and I'm going to just set it for my number. Easy to remember. So here we have saved it and now we want to be able to retrieve it. And when do we want to retrieve it? Well, we want to retrieve it each time we reopen the application. So under our view did load method, we are going to retrieve that number so that we make sure that when we start using our audio recorder, uh, we have up to date numbers. So here we are basically going to use an if let statement, if let number, which is going to be of type integer. And actually we are also going to define this as an integer so that there's no confusion about that. So make sure that that's an integer. And if number of type integer is equal to user defaults dot standard dot object for the key my number, which we defined uh, a couple of seconds ago. And if we can cast that to an integer and we have success with that, that basically means that we probably have stored a number there and we can then set number of record to be equal to number. Uh, to equal to number. So basically what we're doing when we're launching the application, we see do we have something in our user defaults? If we do, then we are trying to take that number and cast it to an integer. And if that is successful, we are setting that as the current value of number of records so that when we start a new record, we are up to date. Uh, so now we have that in place and now the next step is going to be to create a table view where we can display all of our recordings. So in order to do that, uh, we are going to head over to our storyboard. Now, if you haven't, if you're not completely comfortable with creating table views, I would suggest that you take a look at my video on how to do that because right now we're just going to create a table view. Uh, without much explanation about that. So if you're not completely sure how to do that, then I would encourage you to take a look at that video. So let's find a table view. Uh, and we're just going to drag it in here. And I'm going to stretch it basically like this. And then I'm going to uh, set 0, 0, 0 on almost all of the sides. And then I'm going to say that it can keep its height just like that and that should basically work. So here we have our table view. Let's create a prototype cell and select that cell. I'm going to give it the reuse identifier cell. And then I'm going to select my table view and I'm going to drag it to the yellow button right here, control drag, select data source, and again, select the table view and control drag, oops, missed, and one more time, and then we select the delegate. So now we have our table view all set up and we can now uh, get our split view here in order to, first of all, 
um, connect our table view so let's find our view controller we are going to add two delegates like we always do when we uh, use uh, table views first of all the UI table view uh, delegate and the second one is UI table view data source so these are the two delegates that we are going to need and then we are also going to uh, actually import our table view as an outlet so that we can refresh it when we need to so let's control drag it in and i'm going to name it my table view i wouldn't call it table view because that will create some confusion between uh, some other names uh, that are standard to swift so i would just call it my table view make sure that it's an outlet and connect it up and now we can basically head back over to our view controller and start setting up our table view so i'm going to start doing that down here and I'm going to create a comment here, uh, setting up ta table uh, view, just like that. And uh, so here we're going to implement all of the functions that we need in order to uh, be left with an operational table view where we can display something. So what we're going to do is we are going to, first of all, need our function named number of rows which is going to define the number of rows we want in our table view and that the number of rows is going to be equal to a uh, number of records uh, so basically we want a row for each recording that we have then we're also going to use our self for row at index path where we're going to define the content of each cell and basically here we can say let cell uh, is equal to table view dot dq reusable cell with identifier and we gave it the identifier cell for uh, index path with a capital I index path there we go uh, so here we have our cell and actually it's a small I I always keep confusing that so now we go uh, with the correct index path and then we set cell dot text label dot text and we set that to be equal to the string uh, of index path dot row. Um, I'm going to explain what I do here in a second. Plus one, and then I'm going to return our cell, just like that. So basically, uh, if I were to explain what we're doing here, uh, first of all, we're creating a cell, and then we are. Let's just make sure that this is working. So then, there we go and then we are populating each cell now the content of each cell is going to be the number of the recording so basically let's say we have seven recordings that means that we have uh, one recording with the name one a second recording with the name zero and so forth so basically instead of uh, taking or accessing the name of the recording itself i'm just saying that the the name of the recording is equal to the index path the row of the index path plus one which should make sense because the first index path or the first row in our table view has the number zero that means that we always want to say plus one so that the first table view uh, the first cell in our table view gets the name one which is reflecting the name of the audio recording which is also one two three four five six seven so there therefore we're just saying that uh, the cell should be named the row that we're currently at plus one which is reflective of the name of our audio recording so hopefully that makes sense else you have your the comment section down below at to your disposal where i will be answering questions just make sure again a small i here uh, that should fix our problem so now we have our uh, audio recorder all set up uh, and uh, I mean table view all set up. We just want to add a couple of more functions that's going to make this whole thing complete. Now what this is, is that first of all, we want to refresh our table view after we have stopped a recording. So down here, we want to say my table view dot reload data because we got a new recording that means that we need to refresh it in order to display the latest recordings uh, and then we should be good to go actually we can try to launch our application and now we should be able to click start recording stop recording and it should display in our table view we just won't be able to listen back to it yet that's what we're going to take a look at uh, 
right after we have taken a look at this. So let's click on start recording. And I'm currently recording. This should be on the recording. So let's uh, check in a couple of seconds if we're able to listen back to this. And I'm clicking on stop and the recording is saved right here. So this one is reflective of our recording named one. Now we are going to be able to press this one and then we want to be able to listen to that recording. So let's take a look at how we do that. And the way we do that is we add another function. And this function is going to be responsible for listening to a tap on one of the cells. So when I press one of the cells, this function right here is going to fire. Some of you might know what this is called already. If not, no worries, uh, because I'm going to type it out in a couple of seconds. Just try to see if you're able to come up with it. But the answer is did select row, uh, select row at index path. So this is going to return the cell that was selected by our user. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up our audio player. So this is also something that we have taken a look at in previous videos on this channel. Uh, but right now I'm just again if you need more information on this then please refer back to that video. Else I'm just going to continue on here uh, with my stuff uh, because we're going to need another variable that we're going to need to define up here. Uh, we're going to define it here. And I'm going to make it a variable named audio player, which is going to be of type AV audio player. Uh, there we go. So here we have defined our audio player. Actually, I'm going to make this an exclamation mark. Uh, and then we can access that player down here or initialize the player first of all with our audio recording and then play it. So let's take a look at how we do that. We simply say let path. Uh, is equal to get documents directory, which was the function uh, that we defined up there. Or actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head up here because that's uh, much simpler. I'm just going to copy this, copy that, and then paste it down here, which will give us the exact information we want. And then just substitute this with index path uh, dot row plus one, which will so first of all we're accessing the number uh, of the cell that the user tapped on and then we're taking that number so let's say it was cell number two that the user tapped on we're taking that cell saying plus one which is three which is then reflective of the other recording that the user wants to listen to and then we're accessing that recording or then this is the path to the recording that the user wants to listen to. So now we have the path to the recording and now all we need to do is we need to play the contents that is hidden on that path. The way we do that is with a do and a catch like this, like we did uh, in the last video. And then here we're going to initialize our audio player. And the way we do that is to say audio player Audio player is equal to try, and then we are simply saying AV audio player, and we're going to use the contents of our path. And then we are going to say audio player dot play. And this should really be all we need. And uh, so yeah, so let's try and see if we have success with this. And if we do, that's awesome. Okay, so here is our um, application. Let's try to click on our first recording. And I'm currently recording. Yeah. Recording, so let's uh, check in a couple of seconds if we're able to listen back to this. Okay. So that worked brilliantly. That's awesome. Let's try to record a new one and see if that works as smoothly. Hello, this is my second recording. Um, now we're going to check if this also works. Let's try to stop the recording. So here we have our recording number two. Let's listen back to that. Hello, this is my second recording. Uh, now we're going to check if this also works. Let's try to stop the recording. So as you can see, it works brilliantly. So now what we're able to do is we're able to record something and we're able to stop the recording and then that recording those recordings are displayed in a table view so that was basically the goal of this video was to display multiple recordings and then also to um, to
to display them in the table view. Now, as a little challenge, if you want to take one step further, you can take a look at my video on how to use an audio player. And there you will see how to pause a video, an audio player, for example. So when I'm listening to this, I can click on pause, but I could also switch like this, as you see. But if you want to take one step further, you can add a pause button in order to, uh, let's just wait for him to finish up. So basically you can add a pause button in order to pause the recording. If you, if it's a long recording, let's say it's 20 minutes, then you want, then you don't want to sit and wait until it's finished. You just want to click on stop or pause. So that's my challenge for you. If you want to add that, then go ahead. I will take a look at that video on how to create an audio recorder and that video should uh, teach you how to do that. And in the next part of this video, we'll just put a little bit of finesse on this application. Uh, we will style it a little bit and we are going to add a pause button so that we can start recording and then click on pause and then continue or resume that specific recording. So that's something we're going to take a look at in the next video, a part three. It's going to be a short one. Maybe you can even do it yourself, but in that video, we're just going to finish everything up, put the rest of the touch on this application, and then we should be left with a brilliant audio recorder. Thank you for clicking on this video and watching the video, and then I will see you back in the next video. Thank you for watching.